Oh yeah, that's right. It's episode 10. Hey y'all, this is Armenthia with That Guy's Life Media, and you're watching Show Us Your Humvee. In Show Us Your Humvee, we feed your Humvee fix with Humvees from around the world. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of our weekly episodes. The purpose of this series is to give you a deeper look into cool Humvees than you would get from a few pictures on social media. To be featured in Show Us Your Humvee, we need at least the year and model of your Humvee, where your Humvee lives, and some background on what makes it cool, like if you know any of your Humvee's history, upgrades you've made, how you use it in a unique way, etc. Send that info to show us your Humvee at gearreport.com and I'll put it in a future episode of Show Us Your Humvee. We'll start off this week in North Carolina with a Humvee that was rode hard and put up wet. Tom, a U.S. Marine Corps veteran, got this M998 that served in the U.S. Army's 82nd Airborne. The Humvee wears a special license plate that reads War Weary, which I think is a very apt description. What you see in this video was fairly early in the restoration process. I really wanted to show off Tom's Humvee since I keep hearing people say things like, my Humvee isn't special, or I need to do some more upgrades to my Humvee before I send in pictures or video. Seriously, folks, we love all Humvees here. Feel free to send in pictures and video of your truck now, then we can follow up in a later episode if you make any big upgrades. Back to War Weary. Tom had a friend make custom weatherproof seat covers for the old school driver's seat and the high back commander's seat. The truck arrived in two-man troop carrier configuration with center facing troop seat benches, but no traditional back seats. So Tom bought all the seat cushions and base plates that I had in the battle wagon. After the video was shot, he added a rear view mirror and a single den radio mounted on a single shelf radio console. In the Humvee, Comms are handled via a four-place aviation intercom. Portable devices are charged via a charging station and external comms go through the CB radio. There's plenty of power for electronics from the 200 amp generator. To keep cabin noise down, Tom installed some rubber sound absorbing mat. I haven't seen War Weary in a while and I'm interested to see what else Tom has done to make it his own. Come to Las Vegas with me and help me ID this camouflage Humvee spotted in the customer parking lot at Battlefield Vegas. I noticed a few things as I tried to get some video without being too obtrusive since the Marine Corps veteran owner wasn't around. This Humvee has smoked lens LED headlights, the original early Humvee seats, a double decker radio shelf console with cup holders, an accessory power panel with fused switches, charging ports and a voltmeter, reflectix insulation in the roof, that's a pretty good idea if I do say so myself, a slant back top conspicuously missing the slant back C-pillar. Uh, by the way, if this is your truck and you want a C-pillar, let me know. I have an extra one. The airlift bumper holds a pinball hitch and Rhino tire carrier, and it looks like it was needed as the spare is toast. The Wrangler MT tires ride on heavy-duty paired 24-bolt wheels. What you can't see well in the pictures or video is an extra electric cooling fan on top of the radiator stack. If you know the owner of this rig, please leave a comment. I'd like to give credit for the things that they have done to make this Humvee fit their needs. Now we'll fly back to the East Coast to make our second visit to JJ in North Carolina. You might recall his tan 1984 M1025 slant back from episode three of Show Us Your Humvee. JJ has raised the bar and allowed a 1995 Special Forces GMV M1025 that was reset to be an A2 in 2003 follow him home. This truck is fitted with the mysterious Rod Hall suspension. If you know what the GMV C6 markings on this truck mean, please leave a comment. As you can see, this GMV has all of the normal A2 features, even the much sought after turn signal canceling ring, and some other upgrades like brand new high back seats with premium seat covers on adjustable seat bases, deluxe floor mats, JW speaker LED headlights, brand new Wrangler MTR tires on 24 volt wheels, mud flaps, a mile marker winch, and the A2 style tubular brush guard. The body armor, armored doors, and rock sliders were removed prior to sale. Although I can't figure out what danger rock sliders in the hands of civilians posed 
requiring their removal. JJ replaced the armored doors with standard X doors. A pair of antennas are mounted to the back corners. One of them is an Italian model that I'm not familiar with. You'll notice in the bed and along the rear bumper that various secret squirrel accessories were removed prior to the sale, like the rear bumper shelf that required the tailgate hinges to be mounted upside down, armor panels in the bed, the spare tire mount, and a couple of storage boxes. After removing innocuous stuff like the rear bumper step and rock sliders, they left the upgraded Rod Hall racing suspension in place. Here you see the GMV parked beside the Battlewagon 2.0 and M1045A2 Humvee. The height difference from the heavier springs is immediately apparent. I think your truck's got to roll the springs in front, honestly. Yeah, it's so low. It's crazy low. All right, that's uh, 37 on the dot. You should buy you a set of specials and put fruit. That is for almost 41 and a half. That's crazy. All right, whoa. Forty-four. All right, and what are we gonna have here? Forty-two. Wow. On the front, the shocks are mounted inside the springs, just like on other Humvees, but with remote shock reservoirs on the outside. In the rear, shocks are mounted outside the springs to a special frame mount at the top. seats or did you buy a new seat? Yeah, new All right, seats. We're, we're adults, we turn the camera that way. There you go. Okay. Listen. All right, where do you want me to go? Anywhere you want, that direction. The heavy duty steering components also resulted in a bit less responsive steering feel. I mean, I can feel that it's up higher. It's been two inches. Yeah, your steering isn't as tight as mine. It's got a lot of different components. Yeah. The outer arm is a lot beefier. Yeah. You can go left in that field if you want. We didn't do any dune jumping to test the suspension, but just driving around a field, it was pretty quickly apparent that this suspension is a lot more harsh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is uh, a very stiff suspension. So, is this setup it's supposed to have a lot more weight in it or what? Yes, sir. Uh, everything's 12K, I believe. Keep rolling. Yeah. I'll take it from you. And, uh... <laughs> Where are you? Okay, right through. I wonder if the injection pump on this Humvee was turned up because it has more power and quicker throttle response than any Humvee I've driven. If you'd like your very own GMV Humvee, you can reach out to Corey at KPJ Military Customs in Lumberton, North Carolina. You can reach him at 910-258-2099. Be sure to tell him the gear report sent you. It's not going to change your price whatsoever. Or you can tell him that Akbar sent you and it'll raise your price by 10% to cover the referral fee. If you have any questions about the GMV setup, please leave them in the comments. Thanks to Tom, the unknown Marine Corps veteran owner, and JJ for letting us share cool pictures and video of their trucks. If you'd like your Humvee to be featured in Show Us Your Humvee, it's pretty simple. Send some landscape-oriented pictures or a link where I can download some video of you doing cool stuff in your Humvee. Please, video, landscape format. When I get that video, I'm going to work through in the order that I receive them. So if you'd like to be featured sooner, send it in more quickly.